Hello, welcome back to Too Many Handhelds. Uh, this is a Pac-Man case, and inside of this Pac-Man case, we're going very old school. We have the Game Park Holdings GP2X. This is an emulator handheld, open source, that people can just make apps for, open development, from 2007. This is from 2007. It's got stereo speakers, volume rocker, uh, you know, instead of a D-pad, they have these buttons that are kind of squishy. You have two shoulder buttons, four face buttons. Uh, there's a weird port on the bottom, but to this day, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> um, yeah, on the side, there's like a little uh, DCN, even though it takes double A's. So I just put fresh batteries in here, so it'll work. Um, which is also nice, because if it had a lithium ion battery from 2007, that probably wouldn't be good anymore. But Game Park Holdings, as you can see here, is a Korean company, and they made a whole series of these uh, open handhelds, where there was the GP32, which is the first one, as far as I know, and then uh, this one came out, the GP2X, and then they had another one called the GP2X Wiz, which is kind of cool. It's like a little bit larger than a Game Boy Micro. And then finally, they had one called the Canoe, that goes for just a ridiculous price on eBay right now. And I have one. Um, I bought it before it was astronomical, so we could take a look at that another day though. For now, this is the GP2X. Um, the media it takes is an SD card, because again, it's open. So they had games you could buy, they had a whole development community where people could make games and port games, and obviously emulators. Because when you have an open handheld like this, one of the first things people love to make and play are emulators. So this has quite a bit on it. Um, again, I have not used it in quite a long time, but it actually has a lot of really old versions of emulators you'll find in other systems. So first you have this weird kind of menu. There's like game, video, which I don't think I have anything on here, but you can put videos on here. Uh, same thing with music and eBooks. So it's kind of like, you know, they tried to make it like a media center kind of a thing. And then settings. So we're going to game. Um, there's built-in games and SD games. SD games are the SD card. Built-in are just a couple of sort of homebrew. Just if you buy this and don't have any games, that's what you can use. Um, we'll go to SD games. So Blingo is a homebrew version of Slingo. There's a Game Boy emulator, Genesis, Lynx, Nintendo, Sega Master System and Game Gear, Super Nintendo, Turbo Graphics, and Game Boy Advance, which is still kind of new at the time. So that was kind of a weird thing to be able to like emulate Game Boy Advance at a time when Game Boy Advance is still sort of relevant. Um, the PSP and the DS are probably a little bit more relevant, but it was still kind of around. So let's go to SNES. And there's two versions of this. There's Pocket SNES and then a fast version. So the fast one will run games that don't run too well. Um, we'll select the game. So yeah, the SD card, when I bought this from eBay, they had an SD card included, and it's got like a ton of stuff on it. Uh, let's go with Mega Man X. Yeah, I never really bothered to take the games off and kind of curate my own set, I just sort of used whatever was on it. But it's just kind of amazing that, you know, this long ago, you could still get an emulator handheld and still have it work pretty well. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, again, it's not very powerful, because... For 2007, it was very powerful, but now I think a hacked PSP is probably a better way to go. But as you can see, you know, it, it runs pretty nicely. You know, turn the volume up a little bit. So this was kind of a cool way, a long time ago, <laughs> to uh, have an emulator handheld. I mean, there, there weren't a lot to choose from at the time. And it wasn't cheap at the time either. I mean, I got it at the kind of sweet spot when it was old, but, you know, it was like old enough that people didn't want it, but not so old that people wanted to collect it, except for, like, weirdos like me. <laughs> so that worked out pretty nicely. But uh, I, I could play Man, Man X the whole time, but I don't want to. Let me uh, go back. If I can remember how to go back, that's the other thing is, like... All these games had um, different, like, settings. There we go. And remembering how to get the, the key combination to exit is always tricky because it's, it's different with a lot of these. Sometimes it's the shoulders, sometimes it's like one button and another button. 
and then you can see it kicked us back out here. So we can go in here, go to SD card games. Uh, I don't know, what's Nintendo maybe? Let's see, so there's two of them. There's FCE Ultra and then this one. So if we do this and then come down here. Oh, maybe that's not on there. Okay. There we go, load new ROM. Super Mario Brothers. So this is INS, I guess. But it looks good, it runs well. The only real downside to this one, aside from the infancy of the emulators on it, is that the battery life is just atrocious. Um, you'll get maybe two to three hours if you're lucky. And again, this is cool, but like a hacked PSP could just blow this out of the water. So you hit volume up and down at the same time, you can exit. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at maybe one or two more things. Because really, the emulation itself is fine. There's not really a lot to show, but uh, the device itself is what I think is kind of fun. So I was playing Shining Force on this last. Uh, let's see, is there Sonic? Yeah, of course there's Sonic. So let's go to a Sonic game. Like Sonic 1. And this is Pico Drive, which you'd find again on a lot of Ambernick devices today, but this is a really old version of it. And it runs great. I mean, I'm sure like purists that are like, you know, really into like, you know, hardcore authentic emulation will find things that are wrong. You know, like if you, if you look at it like line by line or pixel by pixel or something, but I don't know, to me, just wanting to casually play a game, this is great. Again, especially from a device from 2007. Like it's so long ago, and it runs so much better than like some devices uh, that are out now. Um, not all of them, I mean, some devices like um, the BitBoy that we still have to go over can't do some of these systems as well as this one can, which is kind of crazy because it only came out a few years ago. So, overall, um, I really like this device, uh, that's why I've held on to it all these years and not sold it. Um, it just has like a soft spot to me, I have a soft spot for it. Let's look at Game Boy Advance, let's see. It's it's just a nice little solid handheld. It has a really good build quality. Oh, there's no games. Oh, never mind then. Uh, it's got a solid build quality. Uh, the screen looks nice. And, you know, again, considering the time it came out, it's really impressive. Yeah, I guess there's not games for all of them on here, so. All right, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> I would have more to demo, but I guess not. Uh, let me flip this thing off. And uh, yeah. At a very high level, that is the GP2X from Game Park Holdings. Uh, I'm really fascinated with the products that they, they put out, and I think it's kind of cool that, um, you know, they were doing this at a time when really there weren't other companies making devices like this. And I think if they didn't see success, there's a whole lot of emulator handhelds that we might not have today. Uh, it's kind of like they, they sort of paved the way in a lot of ways for, um, you know, devices like the Dingu and the... Uh, GCW Zero, I don't know why I couldn't think of that. And just, you know, the BitBoy and the Pocket Go and a lot of the ones that we play today. So, yeah, this is a very old emulator handheld and it's pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Always remember to charge your handhelds and I will see you next time.